I have the great pleasure of being joined right now by Dr. Terry Jones, who is a world-renowned medical physicist and delivering the Anger Lectureship. You are a true trailblazer when it comes to full body PET scanning. Talk to me a little bit about it. Well, I, I'm honored to give this lecture uh, and it's really to, to describe how the Anger technique, the principle, has helped to trailblaze nuclear medicine and molecular imaging over the last 50 years. <clears throat> and indeed, I'm going to look at that trail and punctuate it by my own experiences of using nuclear medicine and molecular imaging over the, the period, coming up to now the culmination, which is the creation of this total body PET, which I believe will be transformative for the world of molecular imaging in human beings. Essentially, uh, when you administer radioactivity to people, we use anchor cameras, etc., to detect them. But at the moment, we only record a very small amount of the, the signal coming out of the, of, of the patient. And it's pretty obvious we should really be surrounding the patient with detectors to make the most of that signal because our field is very statistically limited. So, for the first time, we will now look at the whole body, record the radioactivity from the whole body, which will make it very sensitive. We'll be able to improve the imaging quality hugely. We'll be able to give lower radiation dose to people to scan much faster. But the real paradigm shift will be we'll be able to follow kinetically from toe to head how a tracer distributes uh, for the first time. And there's no other imaging technique can do that. And this represents really a paradigm shift in the whole of human biology. Now we can look at the whole system of the human being with these tracer principles. What applications do you see? Mm. Well, in developing the case for this uh, scanner, which eventually was <coughs> funded by the NIH and then built by a Chinese company called United Imaging Healthcare, we had to have a vision as to how what we could do with that. And it comes down to two areas. One, doing what we're doing now, but much better. Image, more image quality, lower dose, faster, be able to quantify much more easily to uh, actually to move traces from far away to a center because it's so sensitive, this machine, etc., etc. So I'm able to do a lot more patients at any given time. Maybe because it's so sensitive, bring on screening with this technique for low dose. Very practical, but doing things what we're doing now, but much better. So when you looked at these imaging results, tell me, how far you saw into the future and, and how amazed you were at the information. Well, it, in fact, it basically reinforced what we were predicting. Um, uh, the machine now is in uh, America, in Davis, California, and we did the first human scan last Thursday. So we collected a huge amount of data, a terabyte of data in one hour from a kinetic study, and it confirmed, you can see the, already from the initial analysis of that, and from earlier studies we did in the factory in Shanghai, uh, some pilot studies there, we showed the kinetics of this and showed that we're now going to move away from just taking a snapshot of the distribution of radioactivity in the patient to producing a paramatic image, paramatic image, the function, which is a, a paradigm shift in, in nuclear medicine. We'll no longer, I think, in the future be reporting an isotope's uptake, a scan, but we're actually reporting the kinetics, how that tracer was sequestered into the body over a period of time. And that's really functional measurement. So one of these scanners is here in use for the first time. As we look into the future, how soon do you see this becoming a regularly available test for patients? It's available now, it's expensive, uh, and it's, a, it's the, the, the challenge is now for the community to appreciate the cost benefit of this really, um, uh, where we're pushing the envelope when they realize how it improve their practice in the first instance, how it realize they're going to bring more people interested in nuclear medicine coming to this field, uh, more applications. As the research advances, it will translate into clinical practice. And I think there's going to be an iteration between people using a clinic in clinical healthcare and the research people, and that's going to be iterative back and forth. It'll all, it'll, it'll push it forward. 
It's expensive, but it can do the work of a current of three or four current machines. It's so fast and requires a much less real estate. So in a very busy hospital where the real estate is, is expensive, it'll be impacting at that level. So it sounds like education really is the key to having this be utilized more readily. It's like everything else in my experience, you've got to show people. I mean, you've got to have the vision, you've got to go outside the box and do it, uh, because successful people are those who do the difficult things first. And so doing it first and then showing the people and then they respond. And you have already. Doctor, thank you so much.